In this video, we will start our differential conservation of momentum analysis by introducing the stress tensor. In three-dimensional space, there are nine stress components that act at a particular point in a fluid flow. These components form the stress tensor. Let's start by considering a cube-shaped fluid element with faces in the x, y, and z directions. In this case, we will identify the x face as the face that is normal to the x-axis. We will identify the y face as the face that is normal to the y-axis. And we will identify the z face as the face that is normal to the z-axis. Keep in mind that for every axis, there are two faces normal to that axis. We have two x faces, two y faces, and two z faces. If we were to take this element of fluid and we were to examine the stress acting on this fluid element, we will be able to divide that stress into components in the x, y, and z directions respectively, acting along the x faces, the y faces, or the z faces. Let's look at the shear components first. In the x face, we will have a shear component that can act in the y direction and a shear component that can act in the z direction. We will call these shear components Greek letter tau, x face, y direction, and Greek letter tau, x face, z direction. So we're going to try to follow this trend where the components of our stress tensor will have as a first subscript the face in which they are acting and as a second subscript the direction in which they are acting. Now these are only shear stress components. We should also remember that there is also a normal stress component that acts perpendicular or normal to this x face. This normal component will be identified as sigma xx. Now we're going to try to follow this trend. We will call shear stresses by the Greek letter tau and we will identify normal stresses with the Greek letter sigma. In this case, the stress acts on the x face and also on the x direction, which means that it will have the subscripts xx. We can repeat this analysis for the Y face and for the Z face. In the case of the Y face, we will have a shear stress acting in the X direction, a shear component acting in the Z direction, and a normal component acting along the Y direction. In the case of the Z face, we will have a shear stress acting in the X direction, a shear stress acting in the Y direction, and a normal component acting in the Z direction. We can take all of these components and then we can define our stress tensor as follows. The stress tensor will be formed by a matrix that contains all of the components of our stress. Let's start with the pressure component. The normal component, sigma, in the x phase will be sigma xx. In this x phase, we also have a shear component that is acting in the y direction and a shear component acting in the z direction. If we were to look at the y phase, we would have a shear component in the x direction, a shear component in the z direction, and a normal component in the y direction. So we can write our components as shear component in the y face acting in the x direction, normal component in the y face acting in the y direction, and shear component in the y face 
acting in the z direction. When we look at our z face, we will also have a shear component acting in the x direction, a shear component acting in the y direction, and a normal component acting in the z direction, which leaves us with a shear component acting on the z face in the x direction, a shear component acting on the z face in the y direction, and a normal component acting on the z face in the z direction. Now, the reason we want to identify all of these stress components is because when we try to derive our equation of conservation of momentum, we will have to consider all of the forces acting in our fluid element. These forces will result from shear stresses, that is, viscous forces, and from normal stresses, that is, pressure forces. Typically, for the shear for the stress tensor, we will follow the following sign convention. So, this is the stress tensor. We're going to use this stress tensor when we're deriving our equations of motion following the conservation of momentum. Now, one final note. If we were to take our moments about the axis that passes about the axis that pass through the centers of the faces of the elements, then we will end up with the following relationship between the shear components. Now this should help us identify our stress tensor a little bit better because we will have a smaller number of unknowns in our stress tensor.